Welcome to episode 302. I want to jump right in. We are going to give you the one-two punch on how to live the crucified life with the kingdom of God. Well, let's get right into it. I believe the definition that Paul gives in Galatians 2.20 is what we're going to use for the crucified life. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. And we're going to combine that in this episode with Matthew 6, 33, where it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. I believe the only way we can walk in the spirit is to die to self. And we're going to do that in Romans 12. That's one of our favorite scriptures, Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Now, in order to walk in the Spirit and to do it God's way, God's way of doing things, we have got to die to self, and we've got to do that daily. We, it's like taking a bath. You should probably take a bath every day. Maybe not every day, but every other day. And you should for sure brush your teeth at least once a day, maybe twice. And as, as far as drinking water, there are things that we do every day or should do every day that we just can't do one time. You cannot just drink one glass of water and call that good for the month. Or call that good for the week. You should probably drink 8 or 10 glasses of water every day, depending on your weight and the heat and all that stuff. But there are things that we do for our body every day that we got to wake up and do it again the next day. And this crucified life is something that you have to learn to do daily. And Paul tells you, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. This is what we should do every single day. And then we've got to renew our mind. And if you remember from previous teachings, we are three parts. We're made in God's image. We're body, soul, and spirit. Our spirit man, if we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, our spirit man has been completely transformed. We are exactly like Jesus. When Father God looks at you or I, he sees your spirit man. It's a hundred percent perfect in your spirit. But the problem is two thirds of our self is not spiritual. And I've got your body on one side and I've got your spirit on the other with your soul in the middle. And I've defined your soul as your mind, will, and emotions. So when we renew our mind, that's what transforms us mentally because we have got some bad programming. I've told you from the beginning that the first 29 years of my life, I didn't do things God's way. In fact, I would argue that I did probably nothing God's way. And when I accepted Jesus, I still didn't know how to do things God's way because I have not renewed my mind. My spirit man, I knew something was different. My spirit man had changed and I knew that something was different inside of me, but I didn't know what. And no one took the time to explain to me, hey, your spirit man become just like Jesus. And that's why I'm here. I want to help you understand what happened at salvation. But then we've got two more transformations that have to transpire. You've got a soul that needs to be transformed and you've got a body that needs to be transformed. So that is the process when we're here on earth now is our spirit man is just like Christ. We need to get our soul, our mind, will, and emotion into following after the spirit man. And I, I look at that as either being spirit-led or spirit-dead. And I've talked about this on previous episodes to where you're either going to be led by the spirit or you're going to be led by the flesh. And that is called a carnal Christian. And that don't mean that you're going to hell or that don't mean that you're doing things out of the ordinary because... You have to drive with your eyes. You have to do multiple things in this world with your flesh, with your five senses. But when it comes time to walk in the spirit, you've got to do that based on the word of God. You can't just walk in the spirit by what you see, what you taste, what you smell, what you feel, and what you hear. 
You've got to use the Bible. And that's why I tell you all the time, multiple times, we got to get into this Bible and allow this Bible to get into us. I've talked about multiple times about a spirit realm and the physical realm. And in the physical realm, we use our five senses. In the spirit realm, we have to lean on the Holy Spirit and our spirit and what we find in the Word of God. That's the only way that we're going to understand the spirit and understand God. And in John 4, 24, it spells it out pretty clear. It says, God is the spirit and those that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And then Jesus and John, we're going to stay in John for the next two scriptures. But Jesus in John 14, 6 was answering Thomas. And he said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. So what is that saying? Remember, we just read that this father is spirit and those that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. So God is a spirit. And in order to, for us to worship God, we've got to worship him in the spirit. And we're going to talk in the next episode how we worship God and how we do that. And why I believe there's such a fight against the spirit of God is because Satan cannot fight that. Satan cannot win when we're in the spirit realm. He pulls out all the stops to get us to walk in the flesh. And I want to read one more scripture, and that's in John 6, 63. It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So if you take all of those scriptures that we've talked about, it says that God is spirit and he is truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And then Jesus said, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. And if you remember back when we had the intro guy going every single episode, I started every episode with, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. That is John 1.1 1, 1 and one part of 1.14. What does all that mean? I believe Romans 12.1 is a must. Paul says, I beseech you, brethren. He's begging you, and I want to beg you too. I want you to try this. I want you to crawl up on God's altar every day. Every day I crawl up on God's altar. I do Romans 12, 1, and I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That is my reasonable service. That is just the starting point. So once I've done that, now I have in my mind, I've, I'm in a position where I have crucified my flesh. I have crucified my five senses. And what that means to me, I've got to picture everything. That just means that I have just killed the Greg, the fleshy part of me. And I have opened myself up to what God's spirit, what the Holy Spirit wants to tell me. And in order to hear that, then I've got to get into the word of God. Then you go to Romans 12 too, where Paul is telling you, look, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There is a transformation that takes place, and this is a day-by-day. Day. It's kind of boring. It's why most people don't want to do this, and that's why I talked about the commitment is such a big deal. And when Jesus started talking about this death, and you've got to die to self, and Paul talks about that too, and Paul was an animal. Paul said to live as Christ and to die as gain. Paul walked around hoping <laughs> That every day this would be his last. And I'm nowhere near like the Apostle Paul. But we have to get in our mind that it is better to die. I know that's kind of morbid and we've talked about this. And I'm going to try to link to some of these other videos that I've talked about. I want you to just think about these scriptures. I want you to meditate on the kingdom of God. God's way of doing things. And I believe it starts with crucified life. I believe that it starts with dying to self. I believe Jesus agreed to come here and walk in the flesh to die. And I think that the scripture proves that, that Jesus came to die. And I believe in the next episode, I'm going to prove that to you, that Jesus came to die. But I want you to think about if we we're to imitate Christ, if we were to walk as Jesus walked. Now, we can't do it perfect. Jesus never missed a beat. Jesus didn't make a mistake. You and I... We make mistakes all the time, and I want to remind you of one more scripture before I close, and that's in Romans 8, 1. And this is a great scripture. We love this scripture because it tells you that when you mess up, God isn't counting it against you. God's not counting how many times you mess up. 
God's counting like the perfect father. He's counting how many steps you're taking towards him, towards his son, towards the Holy Spirit, towards his way of doing things. Father God has got his arms wide open telling you, come on, take another step, take another step. And he just wants to encourage you with his word. There is therefore now no condemnation to those that are in Christ Jesus that do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. God is not condemning you. When we try to walk in his spirit, all God's doing is cheerleading you. God is not mad at you. God loves you. In fact, I've told you multiple times that you are God's favorite. If God had a refrigerator in heaven, your picture would be all over it. So God loves you. God is drawing you, trying to get you to take a step in the spirit and then another step and then another step. And then if you fall, just get yourself back up. There's no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus that do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So we need to learn to walk in the spirit. And that's what we're trying to do here. And before I keep rambling on, let's pray real quick. God, I thank you so much for your word. God, I thank you for Romans 8, 1. What a wonderful scripture and what a beautiful picture of grace, Lord, that you're not counting our mess ups against us. There's no condemnation, Lord. Help us to understand that and help us to learn to live as a living sacrifice. Help us to die to ourselves and live in Christ. God, we don't understand all of it, but Lord, the closer we get to you, the more we start thinking like you. And God, we thank you. We love you. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for being a part of this, and I look forward to visiting with you in the next episode. Thanks for listening to the No Doubt, No Fear, Only Believe podcast at www.nodoubtonlybelieve.com.